Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, Pennsylvania, and I am with you right here on this station at this time each and every week to bring the Pennsylvania land owner, the Pennsylvania royalty owner, the information that you need regarding natural gas development. At the Clark Law Firm, here it comes. I do not, I have not, and I will not represent gas or pipeline companies. Never, ever have, never, ever will. I represent the Pennsylvania landowner, Pennsylvania royalty owner. For any and all oil and gas related matters, whether it be pipeline agreements, oil and gas lease agreements, negotiations, reviews, consultations, royalty and royalty deduction issues, real estate transactions involving oil and gas rights and properties, estate planning matters, unitization and unitization issues, shut-in issues, you name it, any and all matters related to oil and gas development, we here, I here, at the Clark Law Firm, represent again the landowner and royalty owner. And if you have any oil and gas related matter and you want to learn more, give us a call. 570-307-0702. Regardless of your location, as long as the property or gas rights are in Pennsylvania, feel free, give us a call. Love to hear from you and see if we're right for you and see if we can help you. 570 307 0702. You know, we just passed, this is seven years, seven years we just passed doing the radio show All Things Marcellus. I'm very, very proud of that. I'm going to say it again in case you're new to the show. I've been doing this show, All Things Marcellus, for over seven years. And there's that much information out there, and we're not going to stop. We're going to keep doing it because we need to bring this information to you the Pennsylvania landowner and royalty owner. Again, you're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm, and I am right here on this station each and every week at this time. So, okay, I'm going to jump into this because I have a lot to, I want to cover today. So I've talked about this idea before or this fact before, and I want to dive deeper and explain even more what I mean. So let me set kind of the background here. What I want to talk about today is when companies, whether it be a gas or pipeline company, when they make changes to their standard form agreement that they present to the landowner. Now, again, I'm going to break this down. So what do we have? What am I talking about? What is a standard form agreement? The standard form agreement is the agreement or contract that the company presents to the landowner out in the community. Normally, how this occurs, there's a knock on your door, there's a landman who works for the company, not you, the land owner. Landman working for the company knocks on your door and he or she has a form, a pre-printed form contract, whether it be for a pipeline, a gas lease, surface site, roadway, whatever the agreement is, the companies will present you with a form agreement pre-printed in the land man's hand, who works with the company, not you, the land owner, in their hand when they knock on your door. Now, did you have anything in the world to do with the creation of that form agreement that the land man works for the company, not you, the landowner, presents to you. No, of course you didn't. You didn't even know you were going to be presented with an agreement. You didn't know there'd be a knock on the door, but the company knows and a company, as I say, is not stupid. They have very smart people working for them. They have very smart lawyers working for them. They have a ton of experience and they draft these documents, these form contracts well before they were ever taken to you, the landowner. 
drafted by the company. Again, for whose benefit? Is it going to be drafted to be very beneficial to you? Or are they going to draft a contract which they think is going to be more favorable to them? I would think that that's a rhetorical question that we don't need to answer. Just ask the thousands and thousands of people who feel that the contract they've entered into wasn't very fair to them as it goes forward and we see the contract play out. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can give us a call, 570-307-0702. Company Landman comes to the door, has a pre-printed form contract that has been carefully drafted by company lawyers, company representatives, considering current law in Pennsylvania, evolving law in Pennsylvania, and designed to be beneficial to the company. So what do you need to do? Well, that's where we say, okay, number one, we always put our pens down and we don't sign, we get information. We become educated, we call somebody who knows what they're doing, and we get assistance. Because, first and foremost, we're gonna try to, if we want to do the agreement, we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to increase the compensation, we're gonna try to add additional language to the agreement that's gonna make it a more fair agreement, you know, more even for both sides. We're gonna to attempt to minimize the amount of activity that can occur in the property. And we're gonna also attempt to negotiate, and many times, and usually we can, to put all kinds of limitations on the company. How long will the agreement last? What has to occur for the agreement to end? How, many, how much operations can occur in your property? Where can they occur? All of these questions come into play, and many, many more. So certainly, we're going to be looking at the possibility of adding addendum terms or additional terms to this form agreement prepared by the company and presented to you. We're going to try to negotiate to make that better. But that's not going to be our show today. What I want to talk about today is when or why companies change the form agreement that they present to you, the land owner. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go backwards three, four years and say that a company land man who works with a company, not you, the land owner, presents you with a gas lease. Now, this will pick a company, and I'm going to talk about two today. I'm going to talk about Sweppy, also known as Shell, and I'm going to talk about Cabot, oil and gas. So, Let's go back, we'll say three, four years, and you're presented with a form lease by the company from, we'll say, Shell or Sweppy or also Cabot. You're presented with a form lease. All the people in your area at that same time would be presented with the same form lease, that same initial two, three, four page lease document. As a general rule, companies use their own form and then they will present that form, the same exact form, to all the landowners in the area that they want to lease. That form then is negotiated by smart landowners and lawyers to improve compensation whenever possible, to improve terms and language and protections. So you do that. You don't change typically the actual form itself, meaning you don't make changes to those first two or three pages, what you do is you add additional terms by way of addendum. Typically you're going to add additional terms. So the form is always the same. And then you look to the addendum to see where that form is being changed. Now, again, we're not going to talk. This isn't an addendum show today, but I want to talk about the form and what we've seen happen to this Sweppy lease form, as well as the Cabot oil and gas lease form, over the last few years. And what I mean by that is, is that both of these companies have changed the actual form agreement that they present to landowners. They've changed it. What do I mean? Well, if we go back three, four, five years ago, the lease form, and even sooner than that, or more recent than that, the lease form that was presented years ago is different 
from the lease form being presented today. Today. Why is that the case? Well, let's think about it. We know that the company experienced, intelligent, years and years of drafting these documents, closely watching the evolution and changes in case law in every state, but we're worried about Pennsylvania here. They are watching all of these issues extremely closely because it affects their bottom line. And what they're doing is saying, hey, here's changes that have occurred. Here's where we are in the law. Or, hey, look, here's where we are in our bottom line. We need to try to make some more money. So let's put our heads together and figure out how can we make more money? Well, one big way that impacts the landowner side of things is the company may say, hey, how do we change the way we calculate royalties? Now, remember, we have the royalty percentage that a landowner is going to get. Let's use a sample as 15%. So if there's royalty produced, you as the landowner are going to get, we'll say 15% of the natural gas royalties. The company would get the other 85%. You get 15, company gets 85. Well, if we had $100, you would get $15, the company would get 85. Well, that's pretty simple. 15%, 85%. However, how do we get to that 15%? How is your 15% share calculated? And that's what I mean by the royalty calculation method. Simple example. Are you going to get 15% royalty based upon the price that the gas company actually sells the gas for? Or... Simple example, are your royalties not going to be the price that the gas is sold at, but does the company take the sell price of the gas and then deduct or subtract expenses and then pay your royalty? Again, quick example, if the gas is sold at $2, are you going to get 15% royalty on $2 gas price or... If the gas is sold at $2, but it costs, there was a dollar worth of deductions, again, simple math here. If that were the case, then do you get 15% on $2 gas or do you get 15% on $1 gas after deductions? Again, please don't read too much into these numbers. They're just very basic to illustrate how this process works. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each week at this time on this station for the information you need regarding natural gas development. So, okay, we know in our example, we got 15% royalty. Now we want to know how do we calculate how my royalties are going to get paid? We know I'm going to get 15% royalty, but what does that actually mean? And also, what does that mean in this concept of your gas lease and why may a company change the form gas lease? And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to break down these changes from a couple gas leases. And I think it's going to be very enlightening for you as the landowner to see how important it is to actually understand your lease. To also understand the evolution of the form leases. And if a company is changing the form of their lease, why are they doing it? Are they doing it to give you, the landowner, the royalty owner, more money? Or are they doing it to calculate royalties in a way that's going to be more favorable to them and potentially much more favorable to them? Now, you want to have the ultimate cliffhanger I'll answer that question as we go forward. I would guess that you may know the answer to that question, but we're going to really explain it. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. We're up against our first break. I'm talking about the changes that companies make in the form leases, and this could be other documents too, right-of-way agreements, roadway agreements, you name it. 
when companies change their form agreement, we need to look at it, we need to study it, and we need to understand it. And we have some great examples to you for you, excuse me. And I'll give those to you right after this super important message. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, you can join me each and every week at this time on this station. I represent Pennsylvania landowners and royalty owners, do not have not and will not represent gas or pipeline companies. Give us a call if you want to learn about representation, what we may be able to do for you, 570-307-0702. Regardless of where you're located, represented clients all across Pennsylvania and indeed all across the country and other parts of the world for people who own oil and gas rights in Pennsylvania. Again, 570-307-0702. Would love to hear from you, see if we can help you out. And make sure, again, you join us each week at this time on this station for the information you need regarding natural gas development. So, all right, let's jump right in. Talking about when companies change their form documents that they present to you, the landowner. Meaning, land man works for the company, not you, the landowner, presents you with a document. That document has been prepared, pre-prepared, done before they ever got to your house. And it was done by the company, in my opinion, strongly to benefit the company. Not so much you. Now, you may get benefits, but it tends to be a pretty one-sided document. So why would they change a document that they've been presenting to people for years? Well, because again, companies are driven for profit, not to be your partner. They're driven for profit. Now, sometimes maybe those interests do indeed align, but the reality is they're driven for profit. Get into a dispute with a company where you think that you're correct, and maybe you are correct. It may become very apparent, well, geez, I don't know that this is a partner of mine. Uh, it seems like they're treating me unfairly. Well, remember, their duty is to their shareholders and to make profits. So, okay, here's the examples we want to use. So I'm going to start with, because it's a little shorter, and I've talked about this before, we're going to talk about a sweppy lease form that has changed from what previously was pre presented by the same company to landowners. So this is a, an older sweppy lease form, and I'm going to focus on None other than the royalty provision. Because again, why is this royalty language being changed? Well, in my opinion, it is very, very clear why it is being changed. It is being changed because the companies watch the law in Pennsylvania. The companies watch the process and the development and how other companies and they themselves are working in Pennsylvania. They're looking at their bottom line and they're saying, hey, Again, my opinion, hey, we need to figure out, we need to try to make some more money. Well, how do we do that? Well, we can say instead of offering landowners 15, 18, whatever percent, we'll bump that down some. Or let's do, let's bump it down and, or maybe not even bump it down and, but typically it's already come down. Let's change the way we calculate royalty payments to the landowner, to the royalty owner. Let's change the way we do it and let's make it more favorable to us as the company. Let's make it more favorable to us. And as a lawyer who is studying these lease forms, who's dealing with them almost literally on a daily basis, I am watching these lease forms and I'm seeing them change. I'm seeing royalty calculation cases. We're seeing lawsuits. We're studying opinions and we see my opinion, clearly, we're seeing forms change, lease forms change that are offered to people, and they're being changed, in my opinion, clearly, so that the company has a better royalty calculation method, meaning less royalties for the land owner. And if you ask the company why they changed their form agreement, and they say any other reason why they changed, and I'm going to read this royalty language, and they don't admit it, in my opinion, they're being dishonest to you. And I believe that. It is done, in my opinion, very, very clearly so that the royalty calculation method is going to favor the company more than what it used to. And we got to be careful because it may be very substantial. 
In some cases, it's only going to be time that tells us, but it's important to we identify this, we understand this, and we try to change it. And if we can't change it, then we know about it. We, we weigh that in with the other factors to decide, do we want to move forward and lease at this time with this lease offer? There are many factors that you need to consider, and royalty calculation method is a very, very important factor. And it's one, in my opinion, that's easily glossed over because it's very complicated and it can get very confusing. And it's something that people don't ask questions about. And in my opinion, I think that a lot of times the people that you're talking to working for the company, they may not even understand it. So that's, again, why it's so important and I won't get commercial too much here, but that's why like these reviews and consultations that I do all the time by phone or in person take an hour or two are so valuable to really explain these issues and many more to you, the landowner, when you're evaluating, do I want to move forward? What are my options? And that's the same, whether it be a lease, a pipeline, a roadway, you name it. Those reviews and, and consultations have proven to be so, so helpful. I do them all the time, usually have several a week, and I do them by phone typically, but we do them in person also. Your Everyone's more than welcome. Really encourage you to learn about that service. Usually, again, an hour or two typically, 570-307-0702. Don't be afraid to call and learn. We're here to help you. Look, it's what I do, but I love what I do. 570 570- 307-0702 and keep tuning in to all things Marcellus each week at this time on this station with me, attorney Doug Clark. All right. Now let's talk about the change in the form. So I'm going to start first. We're going to talk about Sweppy and now here's the old lease form and I'm going to read, I know it gets a little bit stale, but I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it relatively quickly and for everyone sitting around there with your stopwatch and let me tell you, you don't need to be sitting there with a stopwatch. You're going to see how incredibly different these terms are. So this is an older lease form. It has a paragraph number four entitled royalty payment. This is from Sweppy LP offered to a landowner in Tioga County. This was again several years ago. The royalty language reads number four royalty payment on oil and gas along with hydrocarbon and non hydrocarbon substances produced an associate association therewith, except gas storage, lessee, which is the company, lessee shall deliver to lessor, which is the landowner royalty owner, as royalty 15% of the proceeds, less all applicable excise taxes, including production, severance, and windfall profit taxes, and less transportation, compression, dehydration, and gathering costs, if any, realized by lessee company for that produced and marketed off of the leased premises. That's it. That is your royalty calculation provision. 15% minus the taxes mine and less transportation, compression, dehydration, and gathering costs, less those realized by the company for gas produced and marketed off of the leased premises. That was presented several years ago. Now, here's the new language. This is the language being presented to people today. Again, <laughs> keep... Remember how long that last one took. Okay, number four, royalty payment. Again, still, it's number four, royalty payment. Here we go. For all oil and gas except storage gas that are produced and sold from the leased premises, lessor shall receive as its royalty 15% of the sales proceeds actually received by lessee, which is company, from the sale of such oil and gas production. Less this same percentage share of all post-production costs as defined below. Post-production cost means, but is not limited to, number one, all losses of produced volumes, whether by evaporation, use as fuel line loss, flaring, venting, or otherwise. And number two, 
all costs actually incurred by lessee company. And if applicable, lessee's affiliate, never heard the word affiliate in the last one, did we? Still continuing. From downstream of the wellhead, including without limitation, gathering, diluent, dehydration, compression, treatment, processing, marketing, and transportation costs incurred in connection with the sale of such production. We're going to continue on because the paragraph does. <sighs> Getting out of breath. <laughs> Should lessee sell or transfer or otherwise dispose of such oil and gas to an affiliate of lessee. Again, affiliate popping up again. Did not appear in the last provision I just read you. So it goes back. Should lessee sell or transfer or otherwise dispose of such oil and gas to an affiliate of lessee, then lessor, you, landowner, shall receive as its royalty 15% of the higher of, number one, the sales proceeds received by the lessee from the sale or transfer of such oil and gas to its affiliate or at or prior to the first point downstream of the leased premises generally recognized in the industry as a common point of sale. We're still reading. Or number two, the average daily published price for natural gas at the nearest interstate pipeline. One more very important sentence. Both one and two are subject to lessee companies' right to deduct lessor's royalty percentage share of the post-production costs. All right, that's the end. <laughs> that's the end of paragraph four in the new lease. Look, here's paragraph four in the old lease, just again to give you some perspective. Paragraph four, royalty payment. On oil and gas, along with all hydrocarbon and non-hydrocarbon substances produced in association therewith, except gas storage, lessee shall deliver to lessor as royalty 15% of proceeds, less all applicable excise taxes, including production, severance, and windfall taxes, and less transportation, compression, dehydrating, and gathering cost, if any, realized by the lessee for that produced and marketed off the leased premises. That's it. That's the old one. And you heard the new one. The new one, significantly longer, significantly more complicated, and very significantly talks about the affiliated sales, talks about additional deductions, talks about the ability of the company to use index pricing. Wow. There is a lot of significant changes there. A lot of significant changes. A lot of very significant changes. And I'm going to tell you, in my opinion, it's not even close that this document was changed. The form lease of this document was changed not to benefit the lessor, the royalty or land owner, but it was changed to allow the company to significantly change the way in which they calculate your royalty. And why did they change it? Not to benefit you, but to benefit them. That's why it's changed. And you need to ask the questions, okay, what does this mean and what can be the impact? And when the land man who works for the company, not you, the landowner, comes out with this form agreement, ask them, him or her these questions. Well, why is this changed? Explain to me what number four means. Explain to me how my royalties are going to be calculated. Explain that to me and see if they can, see if they do. But I'm going to tell you this, before you sign any lease, you really need to understand the royalty calculation method and how it may impact you. Can you change it? Can you negotiate to change it? What if you can't change it? Do you still move forward? And those are individual questions that need to be evaluated on an individual basis, not just looking at your neighbor or what these guys tell you or this or that. You need to understand it and then make the right decision for your particular circumstance. We're up against the second break. When I get back, I'm going to talk about how Cabot 
changed their lease form and significant changes here and you're going to be you know stay tuned and again let me just stress that we're talking about lease form changes and we're talking about royalty calculation provisions and those are enormously important and that's why we're talking about these provisions but at the same time there are changes to right-of-way agreement forms there are changes to the roadway to meter site to above ground facilities to any and all other types of documents water storage facilities these documents evolve and change and we need to study and that's what we do it's what i do studying why they're changing and what impact is that going to have you on you as the landowner and if you're sitting there looking at some new agreement today and you have no idea the state of the law the evolution of the law why or that the company has changed agreements and why they've changed agreements then you're putting yourself in a position to not do as well as you might be able to do and maybe significantly improve if you understood these things or maybe it could be and this isn't specific advice but maybe the change may be something that you say you know what this isn't the time i want to do it i want to see if we can negotiate or changes to make this better these are again all individual uh, considerations that need to be addressed on an individual basis and the shows never ever legal advice for any individual the advice is get specific help but these are things that get you thinking we get back we're going to talk about how cabot has changed their lease form extremely significantly in my opinion and i think you're going to see that as well the companies are smart we need to be smart too you're listening to all things marcellus with me attorney doug clark of the clark law firm join me right here on this station at this time each and every week give us a call 570-307-0702 don't care where you are if it's property gas rights in pennsylvania give us a call see if we can help you 570-307-0702 and also check out the websites pagasleaseattorney.com pipelineattorney.com learn about us learn about me learn about what we do and see if we're right for you and I'm going to tell you I'm optimistic that we are. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Give us a call. Learn about representation, reviews, consultations, negotiations, you name it. Any and all matters related to oil and gas, I do not have not and I will not represent gas or pipeline companies. I'm here for you, the Pennsylvania landowner and royalty owner. And boy, I am truly proud of that. Okay, we're going to talk about now Cabot changing their lease form. So I'm going to jump into it, and I'm going to spare you a bit of reading all of it, and I'm going to kind of condense this one. So this is the older version that Cabot used to present was in paragraph 3 regarding royalty calculation. So it provided, again, I'm going to paraphrase a bit, that they're going to pay royalty based upon the oil or liquid hydrocarbons produced and saved from the property from the premises and on gas they're going to pay the landowner royalty owner the percentage royalty of the amount realized from the sale of gas at the well which means goes on it says meaning the amount realized lest all cost of gathering transportation compression fuel line loss and other post-production expenses incurred downstream from the wellhead so what that means there is that's saying that if we sell as a company cab but we sell the gas downstream we produce it it comes out of the ground it's at the wellhead we don't sell it there we transport it through pipelines and we ultimately sell it some point downstream what we're going to do under this lease is we're going to take that sell price and we're going to deduct the costs of getting that gas down there such items as they list here they talk about compression gathering transportation fuel costs line loss and other post-production costs quite frankly pretty standard language classic what we call net back you sell it downstream and you net back or you deduct the cost that you incurred to get it down there again pretty standard stuff what you see in most leases but as new leases started to come in and as we study all of these things we see that cabot made a change to their lease form 
along the way. And here's what they say now. They say that they're going to take, they're going to pay these royalties less all taxes, assessments, deductions, and any adjustments on production marketed and sold from the leasehold. And it goes on and says, calculated as follows. Then has a separate section, item number two. This is in paragraph five. Item number two of the current Cabot lease form has a section called deducts, D-E-D-U-C-T-S, like deductions, but shortened to deducts. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. So deducts, man, I don't know if I have enough time in the show to read this whole thing, but let's go through some of it. So, company may deduct from all royalties landowners' proportionate share of all costs and expenses incurred by the company between the wellhead, excuse me, and the point of sale, including but not limited to. And then there's A through the letter G is now listed. Now again. So, okay, let's be fair here. That sounds somewhat normal. Okay, we're going to sell it downstream, less all these costs. But now, instead of what we read before, gathering, transportation, compression, line loss, fuel, etc. Well, now let's look at what they say. First, letter A. So, including, these are the deductions, including but not limited to, number A, or letter A. Letter A, treating, dehydrating, desulfurization, and purification, processing, and storing leased substances. So that's quite a bit different than what we heard before. Letter B, other deductions, including but not limited to separating liquid hydrocarbons from gas. Then goes on another type of deduction, letter C transporting the least substances gas including but not limited to transportation between the wellhead and any production or treating facilities and transportation to the point of sale including line loss next one now letter d keep doing that letter d compressing gas for transportation and delivery purposes Listen, please, I mean, <laughs> rudely, including the cost of electricity, gas, and other fuel. Including the cost of electricity, gas, and other fuel. Next, deductions that's expressly listed in the new lease form, letter E. Metering leased substances, again, gas, to treat, or I'm sorry, <laughs> let me repeat that. Metering leased substances to determine the amount sold and or the amount used by the company. Next, letter F. Again, another expressly listed set of deductions. Sales charges. Now, pay attention to this one. Sales charges. Commissions. Commissions. And Fees paid to third parties, whether or not affiliated. I'm going to repeat this one. You didn't hear anything like this in the old lease form. So this is another set of deductions that the company can charge. Expressly spelled out in the lease. Sales charges, commissions, and fees paid by the company to third parties, whether or not that third party is affiliated with the gas company. So if their affiliate company they own charges them charges, then they can charge those to you. Even if it's not an affiliate, they can charge them to you as well. But we've done many shows and had a lot of discussions about concerns of affiliated sales. So again, F, F subject says that they can also charge you for sales charges Commissions and fees paid to third parties, whether or not affiliated with the company in connection with the sale of the lease substances, or in other words, the gas. 
And then there's another one, letter G, goes on to say, any and all other costs and expenses of any kind or nature incurred between the wellhead and the point of sale. That's substantially different, substantially different than their original lease form. You heard them. You didn't hear about affiliate sales, affiliate charges. You didn't hear about sales charges in the first one. You didn't hear about metering charge. You didn't hear about a lot of these different things in the first lease form that used to be offered. And now we have a deduction section, which takes up more than a third of a page of the lease. Where before the royalty provision in the original lease took up about, uh, guessing about an eighth of the, uh, of the page, maybe even about a tenth of the page. Now it's taking up probably at least a third of the page, at least in the documents I'm looking at. So again, we have a substantial change. And why do we have a substantial change? Does it sound like that's to your benefit or does it sound like that's to the company's benefit? And oh, by the way, I'm not done. I have to keep going because like I said, there's a lot more. It's a very lengthy provision. So this one goes on to say under the deducts section of the new, the, well, the current form that's being offered. Whole new set of language here that we never saw before until the new form started being presented to landowners. This says, goes on, again, same paragraph, goes on and says, company may use its own pipelines and equipment to provide such treating, processing, separating, transportation, compression, and metering services. So it may use its own pipelines and equipment, or it may engage others to provide such services. If the lessee uses its own pipelines and or equipment, deductions from royalties may include, so if they're using their own facilities, the deductions that they charge you, the royalty owner, may include without limitation, reasonable depreciation and amortization expenses relating to such facilities together. Please, please try to stay with this together with the company's cost of capital and reasonable return on its investment in such facilities. That's all new language. That is all new language. I'm going to read that again after this break because I'm up against it. Stay with me. This is important stuff. Important stuff. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station. We just hit seven years. Seven years. And if you can't listen each week, go check out pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com. Wealth of information there. Check it out. Check out the testimonials. Check out the work we do. Check out prior radio shows that are archived and available on the website. We want to raise the bar for everybody. PAGasLeaseAttorney.com, PipelineAttorney.com. Give us a call, 570-307-0702, 570-307-0702. We're going to finish up with this deduction session because it's not over. It's still not over when I get back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, represent clients, Pennsylvania landowners, royalty loan owners all across Pennsylvania. Don't be afraid to call. Give us a call. Learn about what we do. Clients Green, Washington, Tioga, Lycoming, Bradford, Susquehanna, all gas producing areas. Give us a call. See if we can help you. It's what we do. It's what we love to do. And we want to help you. Remember, I do not have not and will not represent gas or pipeline companies. So we're talking about when companies change their lease forms. In other words, recapping quickly, they present to you a document, Landman works for the company, not you, the landowner, gives you the lease form. That has been carefully drafted by the company, thinking about how it will benefit them. Now over time, these forms have changed. Why have these forms changed? The purpose of this show is to explain 
and illustrate some changes to these forms to get you thinking to understand that there is things occurring and you got to be on top of them and they're way complicated they're very complicated and it's very difficult for somebody who's just seeing these this information to even understand what it truly means and it becomes more and more complicated all the time because courts are issuing rulings and interpreting these documents and companies are smart so they change the documents to allow them to maximize profits in the ever evolving legal field of oil and gas. Very important to understand that. So let's go on. So we went through that first cab at least. And the first cab at least, bottom line is when talking about royalties, it's saying we're going to pay a royalty in the amount realized from the sale of gas at the well meaning that the amount realized is minus or less all cost of gathering transportation, compression, fuel, line loss, and other post-production expenses incurred downstream from the wellhead. That was the language they used to use. Now we see they're talking about uh, talking about charging for storing. They're talking, this is again, I'm not, I'm just briefly touching on some of these. Talking about with compression for transportation and delivery, including the cost of electricity, gas and other fuel talks about sales charges they're going to charge you sales charges or they can commissions and fees that they pay to third parties whether or not they're affiliated that's a huge change in my opinion then goes on to say where we talked about at the end any and all other costs and expenses of any kind or nature in regard to the least substances and so on then the section i just finished with i want to just i do want to read this again that Company may use its own pipelines and equipment to provide such treating, processing, separating, transportation, compression, and metering services, or it may engage in others to provide such services. And if lessee uses its own pipelines and or equipment, so if the company uses its own pipelines and equipment, deductions from royalties may include without limitation reasonable depreciation reasonable depreciation they can charge you depreciation cost of their facilities and amortization expenses relating to such facilities together with the company's cost of capital and a reasonable return on its investment in such facilities again I'm going to say that again, together with the company's cost, this is what they can deduct to or charge you together with the company's cost of capital and a reasonable return on its investment in such facilities. What does that mean? A reasonable return? They can make a profit from you from their facilities? Is that what it means? Hmm. I think you need to know. Goes on, and I'm going to, the last sentence, and there's more, but the last sentence of this provision states that company, lessee, company, shall have the right to allocate the above costs in its reasonable discretion. The company has the right to, uh, to allocate these costs that we just listed in its reasonable discretion. That, again, ladies and gentlemen, is a major major change a major change in the form gas lease and is anybody talking about it does the land man talk about that change with you does the land man say you know what i want to take some time and go over these deductions i want to take some time and go over affiliated sales and index pricing i want to explain to you how this may impact your future royalty payments i want to ex i want to explain to you how that we can charge you, if we use our own pipelines and equipments, how we can charge you. I also want to explain to you how that we can pass on sales charges, commissions, and fees paid to either third parties or affiliated parties. I want to talk to you about how. I want to talk to you about how we can charge you reasonable depreciation to our facilities. I want to charge you, I want to explain to you how that we, that the, as a company, that we have the ability to charge cost of capital on a, and a reasonable return on investments in these facilities. A reasonable return in investment in these facilities. I don't think anyone's talking to you about that. But we are. 
and you're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. And we need to understand these things and we need to understand them before we sign. We need to try to change what we can change and then we need to evaluate what we can't change and decide how we want to move forward. And look, people can just sign and people do that. But look around, talk to people. How many people are happy to say, well, I just signed. It was great. I just gave what the landman gave me. What a great move. It's been a wonderful thing. Well, some people might get lucky, but a lot of people, thousands of people are regretting those decisions. Thousands of people are regretting those decisions. And that's why, again, try not to be too commercial. I so encourage you to give us a call. If you're presented with a lease, a pipeline agreement, roadway, any type of an agreement. And I don't even like to go too specific because I'm talking about any and all types of agreements, any and all agreements and any and all royalty gas issue, or I'm sorry, oil and gas issue, royalty issue, unitization issue, deduction issue. Give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Love to see if we can help you. 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. If you listen to the show regularly, you hear me say, if you don't call me, please call someone who knows what they're doing, who can assist you, who can explain these things to you. And again, we're looking at one area today. Super important area, super important area, but it's only one area, only one. And there are many, many very, very important areas. The royalty and royalty calculation area is extremely important, but it is not alone in that category. And we need to make sure that we're maximizing your terms, your royalty payments. We're minimizing what they can do in the property. We need to do that. We need to aggressively seek to do it. And when we can't, we need to evaluate, does it still make sense to go forward? In many cases, it may. In many cases, it will. But in some cases, it won't. And that, again, is an individual decision. And remember, the radio show is never meant to give anyone individual advice, nor are the websites. PAGasLeaseAttorney.com, PipelineAttorney.com. Go check them out for general, great quality information. Never to be specific legal advice, but boy, it should get you thinking. And remember, today's show will be up and available on Monday morning, as are many, many hours of radio shows. So really encourage you, use the websites for information. Use them as a resource, not advice, resource. PAGasLeaseAttorney.com, PipelineAttorney.com. I want to take another minute especially Susquehanna County landowners in that region, you are presented with these multi-unit well requests from Cabot Oil and Gas. Really encourage you, give us a call, 570-307-0702. See if we can help you out, do a review and consultation. They usually take an hour, hour and a half maybe. Really encourage you doing that. Things are not always as they appear. You need to get assistance. Whether you call me or call someone else, call someone before you sign the Cabot multi-unit well request to understand how they may impact you. We're at 570-307-0702, but call someone. And remember, we're up against it. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. We need to do a couple things. Remember to stop signing bad agreements. And always remember, the gas and pipeline company landman work for the gas and pipeline company, not you, the land owner. Have a great week, everyone. I'll see you next week at this time on this station.